Welcome or welcome back to this Pandas Tip series, where you get all the information you need to learn and level up your Python Pandas skills. In today's video, we're going to be loading in some data from an Excel file. So let's take a look at Pandas read Excel function. You can follow along with all of the code I'm about to show you by visiting my GitHub page in the Pandas Tips section. You can also get a copy of the data I'm about to use in my Pandas Tips data folder. So to start off, we will go ahead and import pandas and alias that as pd, which is the common alias for pandas. And just for completeness, I just wanted to let you know that my version of pandas is 2.1.1. That was released in September 2023, so if you're working with a different version of pandas, things do change and you may see different results. So first, let's go ahead and try to read in an Excel file from our actual computer. So I just wanted to list out here all of the files in my current working directory. I'm using a bash command to do that, and those start with an exclamation point. So exclamation point ls just means list out everything in my current directory. You'll see that I have the notebook file that we're currently working on, and I also have an Excel file called store underscore data. Now that's the Excel file that we're going to go ahead and read in. So let's take a quick peek at what that file contains, my store underscore data Excel file. I have various different purchases here. I have a date of purchase, uh, customer IDs, product IDs, product description, the cost, and whether or not that purchase was made online. And I have that for several, several different purchases, this data set goes on for quite a while. And this is the data I'd like to read into Pandas. If your file is somewhere else other than your current working directory, you'll need to provide a file path to Pandas whenever you're using Read Excel. But since this file is right there in my directory, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new data frame I'll use pandas read Excel function, and all I have to do is pass in a string with the file name. So this one is called store underscore data, and I'll go ahead and execute that cell. Now it looks like not much has happened yet, but if we go ahead and take a look at the top part of this data frame using the head method, you'll see that I have some information here. However, this is not the information we thought we were going to have. From the file I just showed you, what we should be expecting here are some various different purchases, uh, some different items that were bought, and instead we have customers. So what's going on? Let's take a look at this a little bit further. So what happened here? Well, if we take a look at the bottom part of this Excel file, you'll see that I have actually two tabs. We're currently on the Purchases tab. However, the first tab of this file is called Customers, and I have customer IDs, their first name, last name, etc. So this is the data that Pandas is loading in currently. And what Pandas will do if you give it an Excel file, it'll just pull in by default the very first sheet. So if that's not the sheet that you're looking for, in this case, we want a second sheet called Purchases, you're going to need to provide Pandas with more information. So if the information you want is not on the very first sheet of your Excel file, you can go ahead and pass in the sheet name directly to read underscore Excel. So let's do that now. We'll reference this sheet name property, and we'll just pass in the name of the sheet we'd like to read in. In this case, it's called Purchases. Now, if we take a look at the top part of the data frame, we do have the information that we were looking for. We have various different products like the gray sweater and the running shoes, etc. So far, we've been reading in information directly from our computer, but if the information you want actually lives somewhere on the internet, you can read that in with Read Excel as well, and you don't even need to download the data. So let me show you how to do that. So we are still gonna use the Read Excel function. However, instead of passing in a string that represents the name of our file, we're going to pass in a string that represents the URL of our file. So let's go get that URL right now. So if you navigate over to my GitHub page, you can find all of the code associated with my videos, as well as some of the data sets. If we scroll down to this uh, Pandas Tips folder, let's go ahead and click on that. You'll see that I have a couple different notebooks in here. The code that I'm showing you is available to you. We also have this data folder. If you look inside the data folder, there's only two files right now. There may be more by the time you go looking for this, um, but we're going to look for the store data for this video. So store underscore data, let's click on that. So at this point, you can go ahead and download this file if you'd like to put it somewhere on your computer. And you're welcome to do that with this download button. This will actually download a copy of that file, and then you can go ahead and store that somewhere. So if we'd like to pull in this information from a URL, um, you don't actually click the raw button. That might be what you think you, know, you should do. That would actually just download the file. Instead, what we're going to do is go ahead and copy this URL 
And let's work on this a little bit. We're going to use a modified version of this URL in order to pull the information in. So back over in our Jupyter Notebook, let's paste in that URL. And you'll see here that we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to make this a string so that pandas can read it in. And the second thing we need to do is actually add a little bit of text at the end of this link. So this points directly to the Excel file, but not the raw version of that Excel file. Um, Read Excel is going to want a raw version of this data. So we'll add a question mark here. We'll write the word raw equals true. And now we'll execute this cell and we'll see the top part of this data frame. Now we're actually having the exact same problem that we just had previously when we read this information in from our computer. So we need to add in cheat underscore name equals purchases. It's the same information as I pulled from my computer file. Now taking a look at the top part of the data frame, we do have the gray sweater, the running shoes, and so on. So that's how it works if you're reading in Excel information from GitHub. Just be sure to add this question mark raw equals true and you should be good to go. Ready to level up? Read Excel can do so many different things, which is good because reading in data from an Excel file can be a real beast. Let's take a look at these options in order to make your data cleaning life much simpler. So, so far we've done the basic things of reading information in from an Excel and specifying which sheet name we would like to use. There are many, many other things that this Read Excel function can do, and I want to show you a few of my favorites. So take a look at the top part of this data frame. As you may remember from when we looked at the Excel file, there's this extra row in the top part um, that had product information listed over a few of those columns. And this happens so much when you're working with Excel files is that people will use nice formatting and all of these sort of things, which, you know, looks nice, but it's actually really, really difficult as a data scientist. So, so a lot of times what you'll want to do is skip information or narrow down and like let pandas know exactly where the data is that you'd like to pull in. So what we're going to do at this point is actually just skip one of the top rows. You can skip as many rows as you'd like. If you have a lot of formatting up here, you can do that. But for us, we just need to skip one row. So in this read Excel function, I can go ahead and add one more argument here. I'm just going to say skip rows equals one, meaning I would like to skip one of the top rows before I start reading in my data. So let's take a look at what that does. And here we go. Perfect. So we've skipped that very first product information line and we've jumped immediately to the names of these different columns. So this is super helpful. These are things that you can potentially clean after you've read the data in, but this read Excel function is so powerful and it really helps to do a few of these cleaning steps as you're just reading the data in. It will save you a lot of time later. Now here's another common thing that happens in Excel. If I take a look at the bottom part of this data frame, I have a total row. So someone's added, you know, some kind of analytics here already. We've got a row that tells me how much all these purchases are uh, in aggregate. Now, again, that's that's great for some reasons, you know, but when you are working with raw data in Python, you typically don't want things like this because if I just added up all of the costs, I would end up with double the amount of costs that I thought I had because someone's added in this total row. So just like you can skip lines at the top part of your Excel file, you can also skip lines at the bottom part. And I do this quite frequently as well. So going back to that read Excel function, we know that skip rows equals one skips a header row. We can also do skip footer equals one, and that will skip one row at the bottom part of the data frame. Now we no longer have that total row and we can do all of the nice aggregation steps that we like to do within pandas. Here's another really helpful option within read Excel. If I take a look at the bottom part of my data frame, notice that I have this leather jacket that costs over $1,000. However, it does have a comma in that cost. So anytime I see commas in things like costs, my data scientist brain gets alerted saying, uh-oh, watch out, you might need to clean that data up. And it's exactly true here. If I take a look at the info method on this data frame, you'll see that the cost is actually currently being treated as an object column. So whenever we see that a column has an object data type, that's code for at least some of these values are being treated as strings. So this comma right here is um, causing pandas to read that information as a string rather than a number. So if you'd like to fix that in read Excel, you can add one more argument here. Let's go ahead and write in thousands equals um, comma. And so that's a string with comma. 
This lets pandas know that if it comes across commas within the context of numbers, that it should use that comma as a digit separator instead of thinking that that's a string. So let's go ahead and try that. Now, if I take a look at the bottom part of my data frame, that information has been now treated as a number. And if I take a look at info, I do see that the cost is being treated as a floating point number instead of an object, which is exactly what I want. So this is one really, really nice thing. Um, again, you can do these cleaning steps after you've pulled the data in, but it's so much simpler just to include this thousands equals comma uh, right into the read Excel function to save you a lot of time as far as cleaning data later. One final tip for you, I want you to take a look at the online column. So let's do a value counts on that column. While this is pretty straightforward, yes, this purchase was made online or no, it was not. Oftentimes I'd like to work with Boolean true and false values instead of yes, no string values. So I can let pandas know that anytime it comes across a yes or a no, it can treat those as true and false. Let's see how that works. Within the read Excel function, I'm going to use this true underscore values and set it equal to yes. So I'm passing in a list here. You could have multiple different things that should be treated as true and use those all within the context of this list. Of course, if I have true values, I can also have false values. And in this case, all of the no's will be treated like false values. And by the way, this means that the only thing within that cell is yes, right? So you could have other cells with, you know, comments where people have the word yes, and that would not be treated as a true value. Um, it's just whenever it comes across a cell that only has the word yes, that would be converted into a true. So let's execute that. And taking a look at the top part of this data frame, you see that the no's have been converted to false and the yeses have been converted to true. We can run value counts again, and now we have true and false instead of yes and no. Now, why is this useful? Well, there's lots of different reasons. You may choose to work with Boolean values instead of strings, but here's one that I really like. If you take a look at that online column and actually just execute sum on that column, you'll see that we have the number 900. How is this possible? Well, if you have Boolean true values like this, those can be automatically converted into ones while the falses are zeros. And you can do things like summing and averaging, etc., with Boolean values, whereas you cannot do that if you have strings. So that's just one reason why you may decide to use this true values, false values option in order to convert various different strings into Booleans. And there's a whole host of other options that you can use within Read Excel. Take a look at the documentation to learn more, but here are just a few of my favorites. This saves so much time as far as uh, cleaning up things later. It's just really, really nice to be able to do these steps immediately as you're reading the data in. And for example, with this true and false values, this would apply across the board. So if we had another column with yeses and nos, or, or maybe even 10 columns like that, pandas would be able to convert all of those into true and falses immediately as you read the data in, and you wouldn't need to do a whole lot of cleaning steps later. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn all about the pandas read Excel function. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed so that you'll be alerted the next time I publish in my pandas tip series. See you then. So let's take a look at pandas read CSV function. No, read Excel.